This week we have been studying situations of multilingualism, where you might have more than two languages in a society. But we haven't yet mentioned how languages can borrow words from one another, a word here, a word there. There are situations where multilingualism is so prolonged and contact can be so intense that languages don't borrow just words, they can borrow entire structures, or they can even blend to become a new language. In this video, we'll study loanwords and intense language contact situations. So loanwords, every language borrows words from other languages, and we call these loanwords because they came from somewhere else. For example, in English, we have thousands, like sushi and tortilla are from Japanese and Spanish. Chocolate comes from a Nahuatl word, chocolate, and jerky comes from Spanish, but ultimately from a Quechua word from Peru. Uh, the word was charqui, dried flesh. And again, thousands. Shampoo, for example, comes from Hindi, from the word champo, which means rub. Um, hurricane comes from Spanish, but ultimately from Taino, which was the language originally spoken in much of the Caribbean, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic, for example. Uh, there was pronounced huracan, which was the name of a god of storms in their culture. Plaza comes from Spanish as well. So English has thousands of these words that it has borrowed because it had uh, speakers of English had had contact with speakers of other languages and borrowed their words to use in English. There are situations where language or contact between two societies can last a long time, hundreds if not thousands of years. And so there might be a lot of borrowings from one language to the other. We call this intense contact. There are some situations where languages in a single area can begin borrowing not just words, but also structures from one another. And to the point where their grammars begin to resemble each other. We call this a uh, Sprachbund, a confederation of languages. And the most intense situation is where two languages can be so close uh, for such a long time, they, they eventually melt and become one. We call these mixed languages. Let's look at each of these. So, for example, uh, most of Spain was an Arabic-speaking territory for about 800 years. So Spanish and um, Arabic were in contact for a long time in the Iberian Peninsula. So the contact was so intense and it lasted for such a long time that about 10% of the words in, in modern Spanish come from Arabic. And they come from every, um, in every part of the lexicon, we have prepositions that come from Arabic, like hasta, which comes from hatta, which still means until in Arabic. There's words like uh, from science, like al alcohol and aceite, alcohol and oil, which come from Arabic alcohol and azait. Words from government, like tariff and mayor, uh, which both come from Arabic words for the government that they had in the region. And um, one of the most interesting ones to me is this one, Algarabia, which is like a noise, but joy is like the feeling that you get when you enter a nice party or a bustling market and stuff like that. This comes from the Arabic word Al-Arabia, which just means like Arab or the Arabic language. And so this, when people went from the markets in medieval Europe to the markets in Arab Spain, these markets were clean, they had good water technology, and people were happy in trading with a lot of, they were trading in Al-Arabia in Arabic, which uh, Spanish associated with joy, Al-Garabia. So the contact between them lasted for so long that all of these words entered Spanish. A similar situation happened with English, where uh, beginning in uh, 1066, uh, people of French descent ruled Britain for several hundred years. So they used their French words for the high functions of government, for refined eating, for taxes, for writing. So English has all of these pairs of words where the refined word comes from French and the, uh, you know, the regular word for an object comes from English, ultimately from Germanic words. For example, cow versus beef, pig, pork, chicken, poultry, moon versus lunar, tooth versus dental, and mind versus mental. Some words from Latin completely replace the word from original word in English. For example, we use fork now, but the uh, 
English used to have the word Gapel, which resembles the German word Gabel, for example. This one is no longer in usage. And English imp uh, imported a bunch of things for which it had no concept, like garage from French. The contact between English and French was so intense that English developed an, uh, a subset of grammar rules for the French words. We call this a stratum. So English has different strata. The Germanic stratum, which has all the words that came from Germanic languages, and the Latinate stratum, which has all these words from French, uh, from other Roman languages like Spanish, and so forth. The Latinate stratum in English has its own phonemes, like the je in garage, which you don't see in older words. And it has its own syntactic rules. For example, Germanic verbs have uh, can accept both of these orders, where you have the direct object and the direct object in whichever order you want. Mary gave an award to the author, first direct and then indirect, or Mary gave the author an award, first the indirect, the person who's receiving the action, and then the direct object, the thing that's being given. With Latin adverbs, you can't do this. Latin adverbs only accept the order direct object, indirect object. You cannot have Mary presented the author an award so the Latin words in English, the one that comes from French, have their own little subgrammar, and we call this a stratum of words. Language can be so intense that the grammars begin to level and to merge, essentially, and resemble each other more and more. This situation is called a Sprachbund, and there's a very famous one in the Balkans, which involves languages like Serbian, Romanian, Bulgarian, and Greek. Each language kept their own words for things, but their grammars began to resemble one another. For example, all of these languages have the determiner of suffixes. For example, genata, the woman, gruaya, the woman, femeia, woman, the. So all of them, these are woman, the, woman, the, woman, the which is completely different from their other genetic relatives. Romanian is a Romance language like Italian, French, Spanish, and all of them have the article as separate words in the beginning. Bulgarian is a relative of Slavic languages like Russian and Polish, which don't even have articles. So all of the languages in this region began to have rules that resembled one another. Another example is the loss of infinitives. So for example, if you want to say, I want to write, all of these languages merged into the form, I want, I write. Vreau sa scriu, thelo na grapso. In a couple of hundred years ago, they would have used infinitive forms like these. All of them uh, changed, but they all changed in the same direction. And it's because these people were in such intense contact with one another that maybe children would be born out of, fam out of mixed families between two of these cultures. And so they would learn patterns from one language from the other, and they would all merge in a single direction. There's a couple of well-studied sprachbunds in the world. There's one in Kupur in India. There's one in the Andes, encompassing Quechua and Aymara, where two very different languages kept the words, their own words, but essentially their grammars merged, and they became structurally the same type of language. There's a final, even more drastic form of contact, which is mixed languages. This happens when languages are very different, uh, but when their contact is prolonged, close, and where they both have some share of power in society. So there's opportunities for their children to go to the same schools, to work in the same places, for people to learn from one another, and eventually their language, they all speak, uh, start speaking like one another. Maltese is spoken in on a Mediterranean island, the island of Malta. And it was a place where people who spoke Italian lived along people who spoke Arabic. The languages are very different, but the, language, the contact between them lasted such a long time that they developed a language called Maltese, which is mixed. So there's two types of verbs. There's verbs from Italian and verbs from Arabic, and they all have their subset of grammar rules. So you conjugate Italian verbs with affixes, like we do in English, and you conjugate Arabic verbs with the root and pattern morphology from Arabic. So you can see here that we have the words from Italian in red and from Arabic in blue. And as you can see, many of the function words came from Arabic. Many of the content words came from Italian, but it, the language is just mixed. 
This is a mixed language. There's another such example uh, from Ecuador. It's called Media Lengua, and it's a mixed language from Spanish and Quechua. In communities where uh, both of these languages uh, were spoken by communities with relatively equal power. You can see if you read it that most of the roots for words are from Spanish, and a lot of the morphology is from Quechua. So these languages just merged and became one. In summary, all languages borrow words, but there are situations where context is, so, context is so intense that languages can begin to borrow structure from one another, like in Esprachmund, or where they can become mixed, like in the case of Maltese.